All right, guys, let's make today's notes very fast and easy. Here we go. If you want to find the volume of a prism or cylinder, the exact formula is very simple to remember. Now, again, we're talking about volume, not area. We're talking about volume. What am I talking about? How much capacity it has. All right, how much can actually fit inside the shape? Not how much can I put on the shape? How much can I put inside the shape? And the formula is really easy. It's the area of the base times the height. So for prisms and cylinders, it's area of the base times the height, and we're done. Now, remember on Tuesday, we talked about the fact that a cylinder it's a special type of prism, right? So, it's a prism that has what type of a shape? A circle. So, how do you find the area of a circle? I R squared. So, guys, the formulas are not any different. And all I do is take the circle, and in place of B, I put I R squared. What is the volume of a cylinder? I R squared. I R squared. <laughs> Um, well, that's because I originally did <coughs> the um, Microsoft version of the software. No, and um, unfortunately it doesn't recognize, once I go to Mac, it didn't recognize the symbol. Uh, let's replace that with a red <coughs> by R squared. Okay. There we go. All we got to do now is put these to action. So again, the volume of a prism is the area of the base times the height. Okay, that leave number one. What shape is it? Okay, it's a prism. How do you find the volume of a prism? One of these is really easy. What do we know? We know the height. What's the height of this prism? 32 feet. What do we not know? What's the area of the base? The area of the base. What shape is the base? Triangle. Triangle. Okay, so that means that my base is one half. Tight, right? That's how you find the area of a triangle. Well, hold on. How would I figure that out? It's 20 the height? Well, if that was a right angle, I would say yes. But so there's a slight problem. It's definitely, we can't assume that that's the right angle. Well, what type of triangle is this? It's isosceles. Okay. Because it's really important we recognize that because if we redraw that shape, I know that my base is 18, and I know that this is 20. How can I find the height of my base? Well, here's the thought. Guess who's making go all the thing? I am. Um, Matt, if you split it in half, it forms a right triangle. Okay, so instead of 18, let's put down 9 and 9. 18 is the triangle of 0. Oh, perfect. So 9 squared plus 8 squared is equal to 20 squared. So we got 81 plus 8 squared is equal to 400. 8 squared is 319. So H is root of 319. Okay, so that gives us the height of our triangle. And again, what's the base of that triangle? 18. So we got half of 18 times root 319. And we'll leave that as 9 radical 
And guys, the reason I'm leaving that is because we don't want to round until the very end. You want to leave all of that in the exact form. And then this is where we're going to go to the calculator. You can go 9 of 32. So we get the whole number here, multiply by this whole number, 288, radical 319. And then this is what you're going to put in your calculator. And let's round that out to two decimal places. Round that out to the nearest hundred. Well, guys, I want everybody to do that. Because with this unit, you really should have the calculator with you. You should grab that as the first thing you walk in the door with. Mm -hmm. So what do we get? <coughs> and then our unit should be feet what? Feet cubed. Volume is always cubed. All right, questions on number one. So you guys remember what I told you, on this unit, you have to learn to think for yourselves. You have to pull all of your previous knowledge together and make this unit work. This is not just going to be growth arithmetic. You have to know how to think. All right, so look at number two. What shape is number two? Cylinder. Cylinder. I don't know the volume of a cylinder. My R squared times H. Okay, what's my radius? Uh, what's my height? Okay, so what's five squared? Twenty-five. Twenty-five times ten. Five cubic centimeters. All right, so let's find the decimal approximation of that. Again, to the nearest hundred. Decimal range. What do we get here? Seventy-five point. We are. Nine times three point one four. Yeah, here's 100. It's 0.4 because it's 0.39. So 0 0.40. 0 0.40, not 0.4. By the way, how many guys are interested in the medical field? Maybe. A couple. One thing you guys should take into consideration is you need to make sure you understand that a cubic centimeter is the same thing as one other unit of volume. Yeah, that's why they call them cc's. But there's a metric unit that's equivalent to a cc. And that is a milliliter. One milliliter is the same as one cubic centimeter. Yep. I never realized that a cc was a cubic centimeter. All right, so last example. What do we have? <coughs> Half a cylinder. And a big rectangular prism. Okay, guys, let's ignore the fact that we're in geometry when we have lots of formulas. Let's put ourselves back about five years in the fourth grade. How do you find the volume of a box? No. How do you calculate the volume of a box? <coughs> length times width times height. Yep. So we look at our big box. It's length times width times height. So what is the volume of our box? 11 times 12 times 6. 790. Yes. And what should those units be? Okay. Now, how do we find the volume of our cylinder? Pi R squared H. But do we have a full cylinder? So we're going to take half of that 
side because we have half a cylinder. Now, here's the hard part. Mr. Thomas screwed up this problem royally. What is the radius of that cylinder? Four. Yeah, four. No, just three. Told you Mr. Thomas screwed this up. If you take the 15, it, we're going to go with 3. If you take the 15, and this length is 11, what's left over to get 15? 4. But, since this length and this length are the same, and this is 6, that makes this diameter, so our radius should be 3. Okay, so I screwed up. Okay, uh, we're going to go with 3 as our radius. What if it's an oval? Definitely not an old one. Um, so we're going to say that our radius is 3. I screwed up on that. So we get rid of this 15. We're like, ah, forget 15. We'll make that 14 inches. There we go. Now everything matches. That's the beauty when you're the teacher. You can just change the problem and make it work. <laughs> okay, so we got 1 half pi times 3 squared times the height of the cylinder. What is the height of the cylinder? Well, um, well. All right, so we have 1 half pi times 9 times 12 plus 54 pi cubic inches. So what is my total volume? Let's well, so 792 cubic inches plus 54 pi cubic inches. And you're going to add that up, and that will give us again, let's round that out to the nearest hundredth. What's the decimal approximation of that volume? Okay, a little bit louder, Sam. All right, so 169.65 plus 790. No, that's rounding early. Take 792 plus 54 pi. Two decimal points. Okay, a little bit louder. Make some 900. 961. Okay. Any questions on that? All right, so now I'm going to challenge you guys a little bit here. On number four, we have a tube. <coughs> Find the volume of the tube. 